Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Richard Feasy. Uh, I'm an independent consultant. You can see the bi my biography and the biographies of the uh, of the members of this of the panel uh, on the website. Um, my job, first of all, is to welcome you to this is the connected uh, DSM workshop. So if you think you want to be in another workshop, now is the time. Now is the time to go. Um, in the next uh, uh, three hours or so, we're going to do uh, a couple of things. Um, so we have a, a distinguished panel, which I will uh, introduce uh, a little later to you. Uh, we then, after a coffee break, have a session where you uh, have an opportunity to talk uh, as opposed to, to listen. Uh, a thing called a world cafe, which will be uh, explained to you then. Uh, and uh, uh, just before that, uh, in a moment, it's, we, we will hear from Roberto Viola, who I'm sure many of you know. Um, I just have to say two things before that. Uh, one is just so you're all aware that uh, it's being, you're all being filmed and this is being live streamed. Uh, and secondly, that there is a Twitter hashtag, of course, uh, which is hashtag DA broadband, should you, uh, should you be inspired to, uh, uh, to tweet. So the first thing, uh, and first off really, is to introduce Roberto Viola, who is, as many of you know, uh, the Deputy Director General uh, at DG Connect, who will give uh, some opening thoughts and opening comments uh, on the challenge of connectivity. Roberto. Good morning, everyone. So as yesterday in the skills workshop, we use this chair. <laughs> and uh, I don't know whether it's meant that you can see me better or can fire me. I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I, I found uh, 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 what uh, uh, Richard said in, in between the lines very important. This is the workshop of connectivity. It's not the workshop about everything else, uh, because that's important. Because the, when we speak about the digital single market, uh, you have re by now realized that our strategy is a 360-degree strategy, covers all aspects of the digital single market. But when it comes to connectivity, which is, of course, one of the aspects, our uh, uh, discussions with the telecom industries uh, uh, normally led to uh, the industry saying, ah, I mean, connectivity is not a problem. The rest is a problem. I mean, fix the taxation, fix the copyright, uh, fix the level playing field, and then everything will work. Uh, so we are fixing it, uh, but still, we do not believe uh, that this is sufficient. I mean, because if there's no connectivity, if there are no highways, there's no digital single market. So here we speak about the basics of the single market, because this is an electronic single market. And uh, to function, you need the electronic highways. No connectivity, no e-commerce. And uh, also, this is a, a single market logic. So. It's the, our collective common effort to make sure that this market works from uh, uh, north to south, from east to west. Because if uh, there's no connectivity in south of Spain, there's a problem for an electronic commerce company, Riga. So the problem of connectivity in south of Spain are the problems of uh, the Latvian government and vice versa. So here, collectively, governments, NRA, uh, industries uh, are talking and should talk about 
a common goal, which is the single market. The single market perspective is different and uh, means that uh, uh, you have to work much more together than uh, uh, was in the past. The telecom markets uh, tend to be historically national, relatively national. Uh, there's very little uh, convergence in terms of uh, offers and in terms of pricing, in terms of uh, uh, the rollout of the networks. Uh, uh, this is in part uh, normal, this is in part good, but it's also bad when it comes to the digital single market. There will be issues that remain local. I mean, for instance, uh, the assessment of uh, uh, competition condition in the access market. Of course, I mean, this is very much dependent, not on I would say not even on national consideration, but on local, on specific uh, regional or city or area consideration. So maybe in a, in a given area, a market is competitive, uh, so very little uh, needs to be done from the regulatory point of view, and in another area it's not competitive. Uh, and this is perfectly normal in a single market, and of course the goal is to have connectivity everywhere, and so to apply in a proportionate way regulation when it's necessary. And uh, so the issue about investment and regulation in the digital single market uh, will uh, cross uh, much more uh, uh, than it was in the past. In the past, uh, we basically had uh, a world which is uh, uh, the, regu re the regulators uh, uh, and the industry world when it comes to private investment, uh, where basically, I mean, uh, we have the framework rules, and then we have an, another uh, uh, I would say relatively separated uh, area of application of European law, which is the state aid uh, uh, framework, uh, where again operators, maybe different regulators, competition authorities, the Commission, especially of course the Commission uh, as the competition regulator in Europe, uh, uh, are applying uh, the rules and the guidelines of state aid. Uh, now, uh, the more we go into a situation by which operators are interested uh, to invest in parallel in many different areas, the more we go into a situation where in a country we, you have areas where you have competition, areas you have less competition, you have rural areas, and the goal of the single market is coverage everywhere, you understand that, I mean, uh, these two separate ways of looking at problems uh, uh, should probably come to a point uh, where we have a more uniform view of things. That is interesting from the operator perspective, it is interesting uh, from the regulator perspective. Uh, and that's, that's one of the key uh, messages. The first key message I want to give you in the connectivity debate, uh, it's important uh, uh, to look at specific conditions and it's important to, when looking at specific conditions to make an assessment of whether particular areas are areas where intense competition can take place, private investment can take place, or it's an area where you see some form of market failure. Uh, and when you see market failure, what it, it exactly means, uh, it's an area where by risk mitigation, there will be still uh, risk mitigation in terms of regulatory or financial, uh, in, in terms of regulatory means or financial means, you can arrive to risk mitigation. So this is an area where still private investment uh, can be attracted or it's an area where basically uh, uh, the normal market mechanism, even under the angle of mitigation, will fail, and then it's an area where actually it's uh, uh, the primary target for state intervention. And of course, uh, the pressure, the regulatory pressure of whoever receives uh, uh, state uh, grants can be much more and m shall be much more. So, uh, in a nutshell, realizing connectivity in Europe, it's an essential goal of DSM. To do that, uh, we need to look, first of all, at stimulating private investments. So 
uh, of course, when looking at the review that uh, uh, we are planning, the Telecom Roots review, the most important uh, uh, thing we want to stimulate are private investment. There should be the vast majority of investments in networks. But then, when the market fails or the market is hesitant, we have to look at those incentives uh, and those uh, uh, ways to make sure that we have also connectivity in the rural area. And it might be uh, state aid or it might be other responses. Take, for instance, mobile coverage. In the uh, uh, connected the digital market of the future, uh, can you accept that there will be holes in coverage? This will be very destructive for Internet of Things, for logistics, for uh, connected car, for automatic driving. I mean, if the network will fail in a certain area, there might be all sorts of problems in terms of uh, the functioning of uh, the market as a whole. Would you, uh, there are many regulators in the room, would you as a regulator or would you as a company commit to cover 100% of a territory? This does not make economic sense. And I mean, this probably is not the answer. Is it uh, the right answer, I mean, to have uh, state aid also uh, for uh, mobility? I mean, normally state aid has been directed to uh, fixed installation. It might be. There's another answer, which is called cooperation and collaboration among uh, different mobile operators uh, and uh, provide coverage by means of sharing. And this is uh, halfway, and this is something that, I mean, uh, would probably be a proportionate way of solving certain problems. Uh, and then when everyone doesn't really want to cover, okay, I mean, there we are, the tools. So my example uh, about mobile coverage is to say that our goal will be connectivity everywhere for every citizen. How we reach that, I think we should be working together to have an array of tools, which is a single one will not solve the problem. But of course, our primary uh, focus shall remain to stimulate private investment. Uh, this to say that in our review, we, we, we will uh, always uh, uh, regard as the fundament, fundamental uh, paradigm of the existing framework uh, as really our uh, 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 inspiring principle. And what is the fundamental paradigm of uh, the uh, uh, regulation in Europe? That regulation takes place only if there's a, a market failure. Uh, so first you analyze the market, then you find out whether there are, there's one operator or more than one operator having significant market power, and only in this case, and only in those circumstances, uh, you apply regulation. So this is uh, a principle uh, of uh, sound and proportional regulation that, of course, uh, will be uh, and will remain our guiding principle. Now, uh, in, an, in our uh, strategy, we stress uh, the, the importance uh, of uh, uh, making sure that uh, the system functions well, also in terms of uh, governing the system. Uh, so, when looking at uh, uh, the overall picture, there are a number of elements that should be in the right place when looking at uh, uh, a digital single market. And the first two are already under uh, examination. We really have to thank here in Riga the Latvian presidents for the enormous effort uh, uh, that is doing to make sure that uh, we can, uh, uh, let's say, drive to a close uh, the discussions on the connected continent on the issues of uh, having uh, the same net neutrality rules in Europe uh, and uh, on the issue of uh, ending uh, roaming charges in Europe. These are two essential elements of something that you want to call internal market. Because imagine, I mean, we want to brand the internal market, a market where you have 28 different rules for net neutrality that would not make sense. Can you really speak about an internal market with roaming fees? So you move from an area to another, then you pay in a different way. This is not clearly an internal market. This is exact, the exact opposite. This is a fragmented market. So these two elements are fundamental. 
On net neutrality, uh, the Commission has always come for an approach which is to defend the principle of open Internet, no blocking, no throttling, and, uh, and protect the users, uh, and at the same time give flexibility for services which have nothing to do with open Internet. Take a connected car again, take Internet of Things, take I mean, specialized business services, uh, and allow I mean, all the innovation that is needed. The most important element for the net neutrality framework to work, as in the US, is uh, that this should be in the end of the independent regulator. Uh, the this kind of assessment, I mean, uh, uh, how to balance exactly, uh, how to you know, strike the fine balance between, I mean, protecting the open internet, which shall be an absolute must, and favoring, I mean, uh, innovation and other services. And that's where probably, BEREC and the system of uh, national regulator will, uh, will uh, uh, evolve in a way that is not known today. I mean, today BEREC uh, uh, has been extremely successful to help the Commission implement the framework as we know, especially in the market analysis procedure. Uh, if uh, uh, the uh, Connected Continent uh, regulation is approved, BEREC will play quite an important role in coordinating uh, the effort of the NRAs in implementing net neutrality. So we'll change, in a way, the, uh, uh, its weight in terms of being uh, at the center of the European uh, regulation. Uh, the, 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 the system of independent regulators in the uh, electronic communication market has struggled to find uh, uh, the reason to be together. Uh, I mean, the reason to be together has always been exchanging bad practices, making sure that, I mean, national circumstances uh, would be applied in a sort of consistent way, and this has been very, very successful. But, I mean, when you compare to energy regulator, where, for instance, interconnection or energy network is really an issue in common, there was so far little to really put in common. Now, net neutrality, it's a big thing. To, to have in common, because, I mean, you cannot afford, even when the net neutrality framework will be approved, that there will be 27, 28, sorry, different interpretation of the net neutrality European rules. And the same applies for roaming. Uh, uh, the Council uh, uh, last Friday has agreed uh, uh, that uh, uh, will uh, we'll actually uh, uh, want to find uh, a solution with Parliament on the basis of the end of roaming and the adoption of uh, the so-called uh, roam like at home model. Now, uh, and uh, council, uh, the um, Council of Ministers has flagged that, I mean, uh, there's some flexibility on the dates, but uh, of course this needs to be negotiated uh, with Parliament. So, uh, the important message is uh, now the three institutions are converging on this uh, very uh, concept, which is at a certain date that will still need to be established, the system uh, will change. So roaming will become a, a part of the normal components of the offering of operators to a European citizen. The European citizen will purchase a number of services, including the roaming, and that, I mean, uh, will be, I mean, transparent to him. Of course, within fair use and within, of course, uh, all the caveats of the case. Again, to make sure that this transition is uh, smooth and consistent, uh, we will need uh, a great effort by the community of national regulators and BEREC to make sure that this important transition for internal market uh, works in uh, uh, an effective way. So we will see a future by which, I mean, when it comes to access, uh, there will be always local consideration to be made, and those considerations shall remain in the hands of uh, national regulators. There will be many things in common in terms of uh, uh, governance of the regulatory system where we need to strengthen the existing mechanism of uh, cooperation. And there will be another dimension, which is the service dimension, where again, I think we, we, we signal that we want to realize the so-called level playing field. And what, what it means, the level playing field? The level playing field means treat similar uh, services in a similar way. Uh, and let me stress, similar services in a similar way. If you, uh, as an operator, offer uh, uh, 
paper minute voice over IP in the form, for instance, of voice over 4G or 5G, uh, this service is completely different from free uh, voice over IP service uh, from uh, the point of view, for instance, of quality of service. So regulators might still want to, in case of uh, uh, charged uh, managed services, uh, apply some uh, quality of service uh, requirements. But this is not uh, an even treatment. It's perfectly even treatment. But again, if uh, an operator is offering free services, another operator is offering free services, if one operator is offering messaging, another operator is offering messaging, the way of regulatory, uh, 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 the regulatory approach shall be absolutely the same. So that, that it, it, it's the meaning of level playing field. Treat uh, similar circumstances in an absolutely similar way. So do not distinguish regulation by the name of the operator, so to say, by the category of the operator, but by the type of the service. So, I mean, uh, what we have ahead of us is not a simple uh, uh, year, because we will have uh, in the uh, hope uh, that the Latvian presidency is successful, we will have to implement the Connected Continent regulation and uh, lead into the application, the first application in Europe on net neutrality rules and the roaming, uh, the end of roaming that will be left to be managed. And then we have the review of the regulatory framework that will start with a public consultation, uh, with an intensive work that we will conduct in parallel uh, with the regulators. And then uh, we will present next year uh, a legislative proposal. Uh, so, and this is another element which is important, uh, the message I want to give. Uh, ahead of us, there's a lot of work that the stakeholders all together, I mean, uh, commission, uh, uh, national government, uh, national regulator, uh, companies have to do in terms of making sure there's good communication, transparent way of uh, uh, policy making to arrive to an optimal result. An optimal result, to me, the rate of success will be the speed in which we can settle this process. Because if this process will stall and will become extremely complicated from the political, uh, uh, in terms of the political approval, uh, and will take years before we come up with the, with the final solution, I think the whole internal market will suffer. So the more we prepare well this year, to me, the, the higher will be the probability that we will be successful in uh, implementing the digital single market. And uh, needless to say, we rely on heavily on your collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is this mic? Yep. Thank, thank you very much, Roberto. So now we, uh, now we turn to the, the panel. Let me just, uh, we're running a little bit behind, but uh, hopefully we'll We'll catch up so we don't delay you for coffee. Um, let me just uh, give you a bit of context. The panelists have been asked to address uh, a very long question which the Commission has set them. So I, I will just sort of summarize the question in, in my own words, um, which is really, uh, as many of you will know from reading the digital single market document, it looks as if on current trends, Europe will meet the digital agenda target of having uh, high-speed broadband access fairly uh, universally available by 2020. Uh, but there is clearly a significant concern uh, that Europe will fall quite significantly short of ultra-fast broadband availability uh, across the Union and particularly in some of the more rural areas of the uh, of the Union. And then obviously there are concerns about what that might mean for Europe's connectivity beyond 2020. So we should think in this workshop not simply about the 2020 target but about uh, Europe's ambition and level of ambition beyond that. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, clearly, although uh, as Roberto said, there is quite a lot of or some public funding that might be available to fill some of that gap uh, in, uh, in extending coverage, uh, I think there's pretty widespread recognition uh, that if that gap is to be closed, then private 
finance and private capital is going to have a big part to play. And so essentially the question the panelists have all been uh, asked is what needs to change uh, in order to unlock that private capital and in order that Europe can, can close the gap in the provision of ultra-fast broadband and whatever is next after ultra-fast broadband uh, in, in Europe. That's the, the connectivity question. Uh, and then the panelists have been asked to address, as they wish, um, three particular uh, aspects of that. Uh, the first is, is simply what are the challenges that they see at the moment in, in, in realizing those ambitions. Uh, the second is how could we in particular build and create more certainty uh, in the regulatory framework uh, on the assumption that that is an important element of unlocking uh, investment and capital. And the third is are there any are there specific rules that might be required or specific regulation that might be required for particular challenges, uh, such as extending coverage in rural, in the most rural areas, or, or for example, extending connectivity to public institutions and public facilities. So to help us uh, address those questions, we have a, uh, as you can see, a distinguished panel uh, uh, that represents, I think, all the, the key stakeholders who uh, are, are going to be involved in solving that problem. Uh, and if I, if I just introduce them uh, to start with, and then we will, we will work our way down the panel from Fatima uh, down to Henri um, uh, in, 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 uh, in addressing that, uh, the, the questions. Uh, Fatima Barrel, um, to my immediate uh, right, as many of you know, is the current chair of BEREC, the, uh, uh, the board of European regulators who are all going to implement apparently net neutrality uh, uh, legislation, so good luck. Um, uh, and uh, president of uh, ANACOM, the Portuguese uh, regulator, so she'll provide a perspective, obviously, from a regulator, uh, regulator's point of view. Uh, Curly Gabrielovica is the commercial uh, director at Lat Telecom uh, here, in, uh, here in Latvia uh, to provide, obviously, a commercial. Uh, perspective from the point of view of an, an operator. Uh, Michael Bonny uh, is a uh, member of the European Parliament, uh, so to provide a perspective from a legislator and from the European Parliament. Daniel uh, Jacobs uh, is the chair of INTAG, the International Telecoms Users uh, Group, so she will provide the perspective from a business uh, user of, uh, of connectivity. Uh, Emmanuel Forrest is uh, of Forre is the um, uh, is responsible for uh, Bouygues, uh, a large French uh, uh, conglomerate with interests, obviously in telecoms in France, but also in other infrastructure businesses. Uh, responsible for their European and public affairs in Brussels, uh, and Henri uh, Pigano uh, is the managing partner of. Cube Infrastructure Fund, a uh, very substantial uh, investor uh, and provider of the capital uh, to, uh, to companies looking to build uh, uh, telecoms infrastructure. So perhaps, uh, Fatima, if I could uh, uh, start with you um, to give us your comments on the question. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, well, um, as you know, I'm chair of BEREC in a very interesting moment, since we are now living uh, interesting moments. Um, but as I don't know if you know that this, this is a kind of a Chinese curse. May you live an interesting moment is a, a Chinese curse, but I think that right now, in terms of uh, regulation, um, it's very exciting. Um, we are facing a very... Um, a, a big challenge because we must discuss issues that are related to the revision of the regulatory framework that somehow will shape regulation for the next uh, few years. But at the same time, 
we are living a moment where the technology is changing so fast that speed is in fact the right word. And I agree with Roberto. Everything we will do, we must do it very fast because um, investors and the market doesn't wait for uh, regulators or for legislators to, to make their minds and to decide on the future of regulation. So what we really need to, to discuss and what we really need to decide, we must do it fast and uh, try to overcome many of you know the details that sometimes make uh, our discussions among 28 member states to go for long and long discussions that we've seen right now for roaming and net neutrality. So every, whatever we must do, we must do it very fast. Um, and I also, um, I also agree that connectivity is the center of our discussion for the review of the regulatory framework. At the BEREC level, we have been discussing these issues. We are working very hard on discussing the future of regulation. We are working together with the, the Commission and trying to raise what will be the challenges that, and the bottlenecks that we must solve with the, um, for the next uh, uh, framework revision. So there is something that I think that uh, we all agree is that we need uh, flexibility and we need uh, new regulatory approaches maybe with more flexible toolboxes, or at least a toolbox that has several compartments where we can just find the right tools to use and to adapt to different situations in different markets. But of course we also need, so we can find customized solutions, but at the same time we will find the ground for some coordination and consistency among the decisions that will be taken uh, among the different uh, member states. Because again, we cannot forget that we have 28 very different market structures across Europe. And we have many different mature, uh, maturity levels uh, of development across Europe. So we must be able to be flexible and use different uh, tools. And I think that uh, the position of uh, the Commission is very welcome in the sense that it's showing this flexibility that we need. Because again, one size doesn't fit all, as we know. And um, so the question of connectivity and, uh, and getting the right investment is, of course, the center of, the, of our discussions. And, uh, we cannot forget something that uh, is happening is that uh, when we look at European markets, things are moving and you see that in many markets you see investment and you see the deployment of uh, NGA, so new generation uh, access networks. So I think that in the last year the, there is a very uh, dynamic response from the, the market in terms of investment. And I think this is a good signal from what we will come next. So somehow, um, if we want uh, investment, we cannot forget that the main driver for investment is competition. So uh, again, we as regulators, we are always very concerned about keeping uh, the uh, stimulating competition environment because it's the only way to get efficient investment. And uh, of course, um, there is this, uh, this um, um, sometimes kind of, uh, um, how do you say, on one side you want investment, but on the other side investors are afraid of intrusive regulation. So again, we must be very careful in the way we use our, our tools, our, our toolbox. Um, however, um, what I would say is that uh, access regulation is again a competition facilitator. We, uh, at the BEREC level, we are all uh, still worried about uh, access regulation, especially at the level of uh, unbundling uh, local loop, because we believe this is uh, also important to keep the pressure uh, on competition in the markets. We cannot forget that uh, uh, um, there should be also some 
technological neutrality because from the consumer's point of view, there is no difference on the type of technology they have access to. What they want is the type of services that they get, the speed they get, and they don't care about the technology that is behind. So we want to, to, to call for this uh, technological neutrality in terms of market analysis, which means that sometimes um, when you, you know, so when the regulators care about regulation of, of fiber and uh, when you have uh, somehow the competition from the side of the cable, you must, must prevent some investments because uh, in some areas you are just putting the, the the regulatory burden on one side of the market based on technology. So we must be also very careful in terms of uh, what we are uh, doing. So when we look at the challenges that we have ahead, I would say that connectivity is for sure in the center of our concerns. We want to have the flexibility to be able to use different tools to adapt to different market structures and market conditions. Um, we should use the remedies according to the local conditions. If there is competition, as Roberto was saying, we, sh we should let the market work and just uh, have a, a strong intervention when there are market and when there is market failures. So at the level of uh, Berec, I think that the next um, steps will be to work together and with the Commission in discussing what will be really the big challenges that we must face. Uh, I think that Roberto has uh, covered many of these issues, like the level playing field is one of the issues that we must face because the market is changing so fast. The players, the business models are changing so fast that we must um, keep the regulatory framework quite open because there is the risk that the moment where we, we decide on the revision of the regulatory framework, the sector has already changed and we are uh, lagging behind what is the, the reality of, uh, of the markets. So we need speed on the decisions we want to make. We need flexibility. We need to create this um, previsibility in terms of regulation to leave the, 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 the investors, you know, uh, a kind of, uh, um, of a kind of certainty but we cannot forget that our main objective is to stimulate and to keep competition in the market in order to, uh, to create the right incentives for investment, I right. think. Thank you, that's great. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, as, a, as a representative of a telecom operator, and um, in that sense, maybe an interesting operator that uh, we've been um, an incumbent uh, in, uh, 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 in in years to go, but now are uh, offering services across different um, uh, different wide area of services, including TV, uh, data centers, and so on. So, um, uh, gone through the different stages of innovation. So, um, to uh, absolutely agree with uh, what um, the representative from Berwick said is uh, it is important to have a speed. And the speed is actually becoming even faster and faster because um, cycles of technology are uh, getting shorter and shorter. And that means that uh, payback from any investments done in the technology, uh, the payback period is getting shorter and shorter. So if we see at the same time a um, very hard squeeze on the margins, which is very good from competition point of view, where we will end up at the end of the day is that there will be no investments in the future, uh, since the money will just go somewhere else. And I think that's one of the reasons uh, we see already that Europe is lagging behind uh, many other regions uh, uh, in, in the world. Uh, another issue for us is very important, something that uh, was just said before as well about one thing is the technology neutrality, but another thing is also um, uh, player neutrality. So having a symmetry, uh, play, uh, looking at the uh, uh, network operators and uh, the players who come in uh, in the market using the same network to provide the same services, uh, so so-called OTT players or over-the-top players, uh, they should be looked at the same way. So it's just having a, a single view on mobile, fixed cable, as well as OTT players. Um, we see um, 
customers wanting to use uh, multi, uh, triple play, quadruple play uh, services, different value added services, and they uh, want to have this from uh, one operator or uh, one. Uh, uh, let's say service provider, or they want to have a choice to use it from different ways. So we want to create a system where those value added services are easy to create and, uh, and the regulatory framework is as uh, simple as possible there. And um, a uh, third uh, issue for us is a balance of, of rights and obligations. So uh, uh, if we put too many uh, obligations on the uh, players in the market and uh, 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 and provide no rights to actually uh, make business decision, then uh, it becomes very difficult for business players in the market to adapt to those fast changes. So we would expect uh, and we hope the regula regulators, uh, it's a new wave to really focus on few very, very important areas where the market falls behind and, uh, and ease regulation as much as possible everywhere else. So, um, in short, to sum up, uh, it is important in our mind really to look that there is uh, symmetry, that all the players in the markets, uh, and there we talk about internet market uh, content players, all the players in the market are looked upon in a sim similar way, and it is very important, especially because there are more and more global players coming in, uh, in into Europe. and. Um, easing regulation where the market and competition works fast, uh, letting the business and investments decisions to uh, and consumer decisions to uh, to work out the best, the most efficient solution and focusing on really few important areas where uh, where the market competition is, is failing. Yes, good morning everybody. Thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, I uh, I will try to be very brief because uh, there are some people and I think that we should also have time for questions and answers. Uh, but point one, I fully agree that uh, we should work very fast. But on the other hand, we should remember that for the digital single market development, for the digital game changer in Europe, also in the area of connectivity, we need to consider what kind of framework we need. We have regulatory framework and non-regulatory. So I think that we should consider in which areas we need strong regulations, but in which areas we need co-regulation, self-regulation, better cooperation among uh, operators, among uh, business, uh, among countries, of course, because this is the goal of the digital single market strategy. So this is a question not only to solve problems via regulations, but to solve problems via better conditions, different various better conditions. Uh, point two. Of course, this is a problem how we can regulate and how we can use our offices, institutions, also BEREC, at the European level. Is it the time for starting the discussion on consolidation European market? Is it the time for starting the discussion on harmonization our decisions on, for example, 700 megahertz and lower frequencies, if it would be possible, because Germans decided about 700 uh, megahertz, uh, French people are, are during the process of, uh, uh, of decisions. But we need harmonization because we should remember that competition and comp uh, competitiveness, okay. But this is the question if we think about competition rules and competitiveness of our countries in Europe, or if we think on competitiveness, Europe vis-a-vis -vis different continents. This is completely different view. We should start think and build the framework for our competitiveness vis-a-vis -vis US, vis-a-vis -vis Asia, vis-a-vis -vis future Africa. 
but we are focused, unfortunately, only on rules for competitions among countries. So uh, I'm not suggest to make day by day one European regulator, but I think that we should start the discussion. It will be hard, I understand it. I was a minister of administration and digitization in Poland and I understand our Polish interests. But if we want to achieve our European goals and our competitiveness and future competitive advantages, we should start a new, uh, uh, new kind of thinking. The next point, we should overcome many barriers. There are, when we are talking about connectivity, geographical gaps and intergenerational gaps. This is also the part of connectivity problem. So I think that we should decide how to solve the problem of the access to the internet in rural areas. It requires, of course, some financial decisions and cooperation between private sector and uh, public money. But on the other hand, we should use all possible technology solutions, also hybrid solutions, also satellite offered. Because probably in some areas, in some territories, satellite solutions will be much more cheaper and will be much more adjusted to the needs of people. There, are, there is in European Union uh, some kind of uh, voucher program related to, to, to using uh, satellite offer uh, 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 for people from uh, specific territories and I think that we should uh, disseminate information on that. And the last point is related to our understanding of future connectivity. It's not only connectivity related to the access to the internet. It is also network of high performance computing centers. It is also the network of platforms. It is also the network of uh, storages and it is also the network of uh, clouds. So if we want to achieve our goals related to digital single market, Industry for zero, for example, we need connectivity. But if we want to achieve our goals related to connectivity, we need to change our minds. Be much more open, much, much more flexible, not only oriented on regulations and uh, 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 open for understanding that now we need the various types of infrastructure, not only access to the internet, but, but of course, this is the first and the most important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning to you all. Um, I will testify from what we feel or what we see that business users uh, need for uh, connectivity uh, now and in the future. So Intec represents uh, business users. Uh, and I want to make clear this is not only about large multinationals, it is also about a startup wanting to scale up to different European countries. Um, so we absolutely need um, good connectivity, cloud and mobile. They are there, they are even becoming every day more and more important. So performant mobile and fixed networks, they are key as Mr. Viola uh, already said so. Uh, so if we look at the mobile markets, what we see now is that a company, and again, I don't talk about large multinationals, I talk about, let's say, a company, two, three hundred people, active in three, four international countries based in Europe. I'm not talking about the rest of the world. If they want to do their mobile policy, which is very crucial in the way they work, they have to do it country by country. They have to puzzle everything together. Everywhere, and a different account manager, different tariffs, different uh, service level agreements, one contract for an access. If you are a European country active in eight countries, you will have one contract, eight an access. So this is not what we feel is a, a single mobile market. Um, Roaming, I'm not going to mention it, but we see we just did a market survey in, in, in Belgium where we asked companies, do roaming charges uh, avoid what you want to do on, on mobile applications? And one out of three people say, yes, this is so hindering our mobile applications. I'm not talking about just making phone calls. I'm talking about mobile strategy 
enterprise mobility, uh, which, is, uh, which is now. If you look at the fixed networks, a lot of people think there's no problem with the business market. They can have whatever they like, they pay the service level agreements. This is not true. Competition in the business market in most European countries is not what it should be. Uh, it is there if you talk about the big cities and about uh, the areas where you have a lot of companies. But what we see if we talk to, uh, to businesses, if that it's quite possible that you pay for the same service, a price, let's say, multiplied by six, if you want that same service in a more rural area or uh, in a city for the same thing. Uh, so as it's been said by the different people, competition is really crucial. So competition drives innovation. Uh, we see that uh, companies, if they want to work their network, and there are so many mergers and acquisitions going on in the, the different European countries, so then you need access very fast. But the, the, the way uh, repair times and, and installation times, it's very difficult often to get good timings, good dates uh, to, to, um, uh, to make your plans. So if we now talk about the copper and the, the, the let's say, old uh, networks, we are now going to, to the fiber, of course. Um, I think it's very difficult that the, the, the model which was used in the regulatory framework to have the unbundling of the local loop to just do a copy-paste to, to the new world, it, it will not work. Uh, on the other hand, duplication of infrastructure is not really uh, a good option. So I think it's for the regulatory uh, people a very, very big, uh, big challenge. But what we see in different countries, on the other hand, is that there's a lot of fiber which is unused. Um, so fiber from railroads, from some government sometimes, from utility companies is there and it's not being exploited. So I think there uh, is a serious opportunity uh, to do something. Um, a last point, because I really want to, to stay short. A last point is, the last years we talked about competition between telecommunications operators, about most of the time the incumbents and the new players, which are not so new anymore. We see a very big challenge, uh, not only for businesses, but also for residential users now, coming up. So services are getting more and more um, integrated. So it was mentioned before, the bundles with, with the television sets. But if you see for businesses, it's all about unified communications. A lot of companies already use it or have the intention to do so. Then you have other players. And what we see there is, of course, the competition between the over-the-top players and the operators is not really uh, well balanced right now. Uh, this is not really maybe our first, uh, well, as a business perspective, it's, it's, it's for the operators and the, the uh, over-the-top players. But what we see is that you get a lock-in on a higher level. Um, if you see now we were a bit scared about having the incumbents too powerful, uh, what it will it be in the next years when you see that... Uh, players offering, let's say, unified communications in 60-70% uh, of the businesses. Uh, how will the role between the operators and the unified communication players change? So we think it's important for the regula regulators to um, be careful about not having vendor lock-ins on a higher level than just the connectivity. And I will stay with that. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I will start with a joke which was uh, popular in France in the 70s. Uh, we said that half of the population was waiting for the telephone and half of the population for the tone. And then came uh, President Giscard d'Estaing and decided that it, was, uh, he, it had an end and uh, he made decisions. It was the time of the monopoly and we had very rapidly, after se uh, 100 years, uh, full copper network. Then came the unbundling and it was mentioned previously and the unbundling was very efficient uh, to promote competition on the local loop and services and so on and to have very low prices and it's very important we have very low price in Europe and at least in France 30 euro or even less uh, for the internet uh, in the United States it's more uh, it's closer to 100 dollars than to 30 or 20 euros and it's uh, part of the problem because uh, now uh, the citizens are waiting for the decisions of the operators to invest and uh, the operators are waiting for the regulation because uh, the model of the inbundling as it was said is 
not an incentive to invest because I understand that uh, an incumbent, for instance, say, if I invest in the fiber optic and at the, the end of the day I must uh, give my fiber optic to all my competitors, it's not the same, uh, the, the, the same incentive at, uh, in the past at the time of uh, Valéry Giscard d'Estaing. That's why the situation is uh, very different from one member state to the other one, and it was said before by, by, by Mrs. Barros, in uh, the UK, BT has a kind of monopoly, but there is a functional separation between network and services. In Netherlands, I think the, the incumbent has also a monopoly, but uh, it's uh, unbundled. Uh, in Nordic countries or in Germany, you have some monopoly in some cities. You have the Stadtwerke in uh, Germany, in Munich, or some uh, such uh, cities with one network and many service operators. It depends, uh, and also, also uh, parallel to that, uh, uh, infra infrastructure-based uh, competition. So to, to be brief, uh, what to do, and I think it's a very complex system. I agree uh, with the fact that uh, there should be very flexible regulation adapting itself to the situation in every country, and also co-regulation because uh, we must uh, leave the initiative to uh, the operators to uh, decide how they can uh, tackle the problem because we know that the citizen won't wait uh, one century before having access to a broadband uh, network in uh, each uh, part of uh, the European territory. I, I speak more on fixed network because in uh, mobile network it's very easy. Uh, one customer having a service in Paris, he needs the service everywhere in France and though there is no choice for the operators uh, to cover, as soon as possible, all the territory. It's clear that uh, in the fixed network, the operators are keen to cover the very uh, profitable areas and not the rural areas. There is no, no incentive to co uh, cover the rural areas of Auvergne or Dordogne, uh, to mention it. So what should be done? Uh, encourage mutualization and uh, co-investment and also public financing with the right uh, regulation of the state aids, a flexible regulation to help uh, local authorities to develop uh, fiber optic networks in the rural areas, to discourage price decrease. Uh, and I think it was uh, with right that uh, Roberto mentioned uh, the TSM uh, within uh, the framework of this, uh, th th this workshop because uh, it's clear that we need uh, the neutrality of internet, but the operators must be secure on the fact that, can, that they can manage uh, the traffic uh, properly. And uh, regarding the roaming uh, services, you must know, because it's never said, uh, that uh, you, we have in France, for instance, very attractive packages for 4 or 10 euros uh, for uh, very uh, not so rich customers who never travel. And uh, if there is no more uh, roaming charges, either uh, these, uh, these tra uh, tariff schemes w w will be forbidden for uh, us being used outside the country, or we will have to increase the prices, and I'm not sure that uh, it's the right solution to say the poor will pay for the rich, or uh, the operators uh, would ha will have less incentive to invest in the next generation networks. And uh, lastly, on the technical side, uh, on the regulation, symmetric uh, regulation is needed uh, in general to make sure that uh, each uh, service operator can, uh, can access to uh, the fiber optic of uh, the, the competitors uh, according to fair rules, as is the case in France for uh, uh, dense areas and asymmetric uh, regulation. When one operator has more than 35% market share, it should be agreed that uh, he's regulated to offer his fiber optic. But it has been, it has to be said in advance so that uh, everyone knows under which conditions is uh, capable uh, to invest. So thank you, uh, and uh, I hope I have answered uh, modestly a few questions which were asked. Yes, I think it's, it's an interesting debate because we have on the panel some people who advocate for uh, let's foster competition as the only way to encourage investment and we have other people suggesting that it's time for consolidation. So more operators or less operators? And I think here uh, I would first want to share that competition in infrastructure is a failure. It just doesn't work. Uh, it works on mobile, as uh, uh, my neighbor just uh, said. We agree, because uh, coverage is needed, and it's a key 
differentiating factor on mobile, it is not on the fixed. So on the fixed, what do we see? When competition works, most of the time we have overinvestment, which is a waste of money which could be applicable to other places. And when it doesn't work, we have no investment where some of our citizens deserve some service, or we even have you know, license to kill, like uh, British Telecom over-investing after GigaClear, who has you know, made a private initiative uh, network in an area, and suddenly there was nothing more important for British Telecom to put a couple of million of pounds precisely where a private initiative started, just to kill competition. So competition on infrastructure has revealed to be inefficient. And the more time we take to recognize that, the more delay we are going to experience. What are the positive experience in terms of uh, 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 FTTH networks or, or NGA networks? Singapore, Stockholm, Milan, those are public initiative network. And that's normal. Let's recognize that a network uh, especially when it comes to you know, rural areas or medium-dense area, is a public network. And it has to be, to me, once you recognize that uh, competition on infrastructure is inefficient, the only response is regulation. The market is a failure. Let's organize it. Let's recognize that the monopoly, the monopoly, yes, I dare to say this word, the monopoly is an appropriate respond, response to this challenge provided it's adequately uh, regulated in order to avoid a new incumbent type of situation that we have experienced for copper for the last you know, 50 years, and we don't want to experience that for, for fiber in the next centuries. So I think the market currently is not organized, and I see you know, some people are saying, technology is evolving, let's have short-term payback. Fine. That's true for part of for the technology. That's not true for the network. Passive network, especially fiber, I cannot dream of a, you know, a more stable technology that can stay for 50 years buried somewhere in the ground and will not, not, not change. So I think we have to recognize that our model, which is vertically integrated with the content provider, the service provider, the network layer, the telcos model, is dead. It is dead, and the longer we want to pretend that this, mo that this model will, will, will prevail, the longer it will take us to upgrade Europe. We must recognize that the model has switched to an over-the-top model, horizontal, a service model, and a network model. And those models do not obey to the same financial criteria. On the top ones, it's quick uh, uh, payback, it's high competition, and on the lower one, it's low payback, it's long-term investment, and you cannot apply the same model for, the, for the very different, these different markets. So I think to conclude in terms of competition, I think we need more competition on services, and we need less competition, or I would say organized investment on networks. And I think public initiative network, regulated monopoly, is the key to untap private equity. I represent an, an infrastructure investment fund. I've just been able to deploy less than 100 million euros in, in FTTH type of network. I would be you know, so happy if I could invest 1 billion, but I just don't find the right the, uh, countries, the right regulation in place, which gives me sufficient visibility. In the infrastructure funds today, they, have, they are raising 15 billion euros every year, roughly. For the, next, uh, for the last uh, uh, 10 years. Only 2% is applied to telecom. We invest in water distribution network, gas distribution network, electrical distribution network. We don't invest in telecom network, which is the future of our continent. How does that, that, that that's, that's, that's that insane. So I urge the, the EU, I urge the regulator to please organize public investment through public initiative network of highly regulated monopolies. Fantastic. Thank you, Henri. Um, as, as we say in the, the UK, he has a man with money burning in his pocket. Um, 
So I, I'm very conscious of Mikhail's point, uh, comment that we should have some time for, for questions, and uh, I emphasize you know, questions rather than statements uh, from the audience. We do, after the coffee break, people will have an opportunity to talk at much more, at much more length. But, so I do at this point just want to see if, there, if anybody has a question they would like to uh, address to the panel. If you could say who you are and who you represent and keep your question short, that would be greatly appreciated. Perhaps the gentleman at the front to start with and then Tony a bit at the back. I don't know whether we have a microphone or perhaps you can just shout, frankly, to... Thank you. David Cullen from the UK, representing INCA, the Alternet um, Trade News Association body. Um, the question, I think, triggers from Henri's very powerful statements right at the end. And I would like to know how, um, what the panel's view generally, and probably Fitzsimmons' view specifically, would be about how Berwick and the NRAs can move very quickly to adopt a different horizontal commercial model rather than the vertically integrated model which is held passionately for obvious financial reasons by every telco. Well, I, I think that our role, our role is to create the right conditions for, for um, operators to organize their own business models. Uh, something that was uh, said, and I think uh, I, I totally agree, is this idea that uh, we should have more co-investment. It's probably the most efficient way to get connectivity. I'm from a country where we have uh, three platforms competing against each other, so two fiber networks and uh, one cable network, and it's working. And on rural areas, we have state ed uh, um, investments uh, in fiber. And so I truly believe that what is really important is to create the right conditions to develop the new business models. It's not our role to tell the operators how they should organize themselves. However, it's our role to create the right conditions. And I'm very um, a defensor of uh, co-investment as the way forward. Thank you. had a question, sorry, and, but not a microphone. No, I just have a question uh, to Henri. Um, you said uh, all investors are thinking in your way, you know. Isn't it puzzling that there are business models should be free in a capital market, you know? And we had a lot of investors um, also in the US who still investing substantial amount of money in integrated companies, like I'm speaking for the cable industry now, and I think quite successful in recent years, you know, if you look on the investments, which had been done by, by Liberty Global or others, you know, uh, they created enormous value, and everything is based on infrastructure competition. And even if you look to the US, you know, Comcast and other uh, have a similar development, and, and uh, the value uh, for, for German, Kabel, Deutschland, uh, is eight times as much uh, and they went uh, public, you know. So are these investors crazy, you know, or <laughs> or is only your thinking of investment? Because I think going back to monopoly days uh, would would not be a, an advantage. Maybe with the exception of rural areas, we talked about that, you know, but not for for coverage where where there is already infrastructure competition working. And also maybe last point: Are you aware that the best coverage in in broadband is in areas where we have infrastructure competition like in Belgium or in Netherlands. Yes, uh, I don't want, if I, you know, my message was uh, oversimplifying in order to be a little bit, uh, you know, awakening the, the audience and obviously uh, I succeeded. <laughs> I respect what you're saying and I think the main problem that we have in Europe is not in the dense area where the cable operators have chosen to invest. It was a private investment decision. They made it knowing where they are, and I think that's fine, and you're right, that once they are here, they, they awake the incumbent, and they push the incumbent to do something. Otherwise, the, you know, the, 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 what the incumbent generally, and I'm not finger-pointing at anyone, <laughs> but generally they, they, they advocate for the PPP model. You know what the PPP means? You know, usually public-private partnership. But for the incumbent, it's promise, pretend, and postpone. 
in addition, I, I have expressed that we should start the discussion on consolidation. It doesn't mean that we are deciding now, but we should start this, this discussion and we should come back to the model, to the much more horizontal model when we are talking about uh, um, uh, telecom operators and we are talking about building the infrastructure. This is important because uh, uh, you, you mentioned that the competition is the condition for innovation. But on the other hand, cooperation in the digital world is much more important for the innovation than competition. So we should redefine our minds if we are talking about digital challenges and if we want to achieve our goals as Europe. Not only, not only as 28 countries. This is a challenge that we should understand it. So we need horizontal view, we need a new paradigm. It doesn't mean that when we will start the discussion on, on uh, consolidation, we will create monopolies because uh, uh, consolidation under the rules of competition could create healthy market. And I think that we should, as liberty, which is investing uh, uh, and respect all rules, as, uh, for example, uh, uh, Deutsche Telekom, which is active in, uh, uh, in Germany and in some European countries, and also as uh, T-Mobile is very active and strong partner in Poland, yes? So I think that we, 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 we should open our minds because we need new impulses for innovation, for investments, and for uh, uh, ensuring that the infrastructure and the connectivity uh, will be a good background for future development. I had a question to Henri as well. Uh, so you mentioned about, uh, as a comparison for the competition infrastructure, uh, water supply, electricity. Um, to you as a consumer, do you think that those are uh, very good, efficiently functioning markets that offer incredible services to the consumers? Is, is that really a successful model to compare to? Um, and while as we look at the same, we have also mobile virtual network operation operators and we know that they are mostly failures as well in uh, Europe. I'm a strong advocate of competition on services. I don't think, you know, any glass fiber, any fiber optic is better than any, any other one. I'm not an advocate of competition on passive network. I think it's a mistake. I should just invite this. Y y yes, I agree with uh, my colleague, and I would like to say the United States are the United States, but in France, or in Europe in general, it's very important to promote uh, SMEs in the rural areas, and there are many, many uh, small villages or small cities where we have SMEs who would like to be connected uh, to the connected market, and for, uh, for that, they need absolutely high broadband and the only solution is a kind of per equation be between the big cities and uh, these zones or uh, the promotion of uh, public networks in this zone because I fear that in some uh, other states outside Europe there are very good connections in the big uh, urban areas in the Silicon Valley, in Mountain View certainly, not in all rural areas of the United States. Thanks. Um, Daniel. Um, I just want to like to, to react to, to Mr. Boni. So as I said, uh, competition drives innovation. And when companies want to build their digital strategy, it's important that they have different choices. On the other hand, what we see is that companies like the, the example we had yesterday from Scania was a very good example where you see that partnering with business users like Scania, ICT companies, telecommunications operators to cooperate and to work something out is really, is really crucial. Can I just uh, mention something? There is what we call co-optitions, that is cooperation and competition. And I think this is the right solution. Okay, um, we're rushing towards the coffee break. I just want to check, first of all, that none of our panelists, if there's one burning comment anybody wants to make, I think we've gone back through the panel again. Uh, any last burning question? There's one in the corner there, so. Yeah. If you could again uh, quickly. Dalibor Vavruska from Citigroup. I think we just spent a couple of months actually researching this issue, and I have to agree on lots of things uh, that, that were said. Uh, the report is called The Rebirth of Telecom Monopoly, and uh, it's, if you type this in Google, you can access all our work on this. 
Now, uh, my question is, uh, I mean, we agree that uh, there are some elements of uh, infrastructure that is utility type and competition doesn't make sense. It is a failure and, and I think it provokes a thought about this uh, uh, vertical uh, integration and whether that's the, that's the right model. I think the question is, how do you get out of this? Uh, because the, the argument is that uh, regulation and imposing on things may not be seen as the, as, 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 as the right way. Um, I've discussed it with hundreds of investors and we, we, we are really involved in this subject. And I think the, one of the ways that we are talking about, that we are proposing is uh, along the lines of voluntary separation when the regulators can provide a framework rather than saying you have to separate, you have to monopolize this. Uh, will focus on the digital services and will create an opportunity for the company or expectation that the money is to be made in the digital services, uh, which may lead to uh, a different behavior of the main telecom players. Uh, we just had this example in the Czech Republic with the first voluntary structural separation of an incumbent where the private owner of the company actually decided to go for it. I think uh, from my understanding, talking to CEOs of companies, this is not the only company that is looking at this. And I think that uh, the question is basically the question, I, I know it was supposed to be a short question, but uh, so the question is, uh, should we focus on forcing this through regulation that will force the monopoly or a visionary regulation that will actually lead to that outcome? I, I, that goes into my category of questions that can be solved over coffee uh, in, in the coffee break. So perhaps I suggest that we we, we aim to do that now. I mean, just very quickly, I think, there, for me at least, there were sort of three very interesting themes. I mean, there were many, many interesting things. You know, one is clear, I think, recognition across the panel that the kind of current regulatory toolbox needs, you know, some pretty radical rethinking. It either needs to get more agile and more focused, which I think was the call of some people, uh, or, or it just needs to fundamentally change in terms of not being a toolbox about promoting competition at all, but a toolbox about promoting something else. Maybe it's monopoly or, or something else. The second was, I think, the old question uh, that we seem to always debate at these things between do we need more harmonization or do we meet, need more localization? Uh, you know, clearly remains a key one. And I thought the third comment that at least struck me that Daniel made was, you know, why is there apparently a lot of unused infrastructure and unused idle fiber uh, sitting out there already? Uh, and what would be a policy to unlock that? So with those thoughts, perhaps we can take a 10 minute break. Is that, uh, is that okay? And then come back and we'll explain, or somebody else will explain the, uh, the World Cafe session. Thanks very much. Perhaps you could join me in thanking the panel. If you could just uh, thank the panel as well, please. Thank you.